Hey guys, just wanted to make a video, a update, and a general overview of the XJ, where we have it now, what we've done to it, and later on I'll make a video on what we started with with the XJ, our initial build with the Dana 44s from the old 70s Cherokee we had, and uh, kind of give you the absolute beginning of the XJ. But for now, this is the finished product, what we've been working on for the last several months, upgrading to one-ton axles from a Ford Super Duty and all the stuff that's gone into that. So the drivetrain of the Jeep is pretty stock. We have the stock 4.0 liter high output with the AW4 automatic behind it. We have swapped in a 241 OR from a TJ Rubicon. So we have that nice four to one low range. The suspension started out as a out of the box eight and a half inch long arm from BDS. Swapping over to the one ton axles, we redid the rear because of the axle wrap issues we were having with the BDS setup. Originally having two inch blocks under the leaf springs caused a lot of issues. We're still gonna run an anti-wrap bar, but for now we got some incredibly nice shackle relocation brackets that allow complete adjustability to the shackle angle and how much lift you want. These shackles also screw out to become longer. They're from Iron Man Fab over on the East Coast. So we use this shackle relocation to dial in the pinion angle and to eliminate the two inch blocks for the rear leafs. So now we run a five inch BDS leaf spring that came with eight and a half inch lift originally with the shackle relocation. So it turns out to have a very flat arch, very smooth ride and tons of articulation. We're using the eight and a half inch lift BDS shocks currently. They seem to have the proper travel we're looking for and so far have been working great. The axles, Came out of a 1999 Ford Super Duty on the front. It's an F-250. This is a Dana 50, which endless people I know talk bad about. But we never had any issues with our Dana 44 front end with our 37s, the way that we wheel. The Dana 50 has a half inch larger ring gear diameter and it has massive outer seas Dana 60 size U-joints, stub shafts, very, very strong housing. So the only issues that we could see in the future are the pinion is the same shaft diameter as a 44, but we're running 538 gears. So that'll take some pressure off of the pinion to a small extent. And we're running a Yukon Grizzly locker in the front with mile marker hubs. Also, one cool thing about the 50 is you can shave the differential. So we've gained three quarters to an inch of ground clearance under the front end. The truss, we used the one ton TJ swap, Super Duty swap truss kit from Artec. Everything went together perfectly. The only difference for the Dana 50 was the casting on the back of the axle it was slightly different. So the truss had a little bit more of a gap going over the rear housing, which you can see here. So we were able to put a few strip welds along the spots where it touches, but the, the, but the truss is massively strong. So most of the strength is coming from this bridge over to the coil mounts and underneath. So lots of strength. Nothing is ever gonna go wrong up here. Also with the high pinion front end, as being a reverse rotation front end, that's another plus to the strength. The drive shaft angle is a lot better than it used to be with the old low pinion Dana 44s we had. Also, the long arms sit almost parallel on the top. The angle is a lot lower. We actually have seen the Jeep dropped by about one inch overall over the original build. So that's been nice as well because we wanted to keep it as low as we could without cutting huge amounts of the body away. The rear axle came out of a 2005 Ford Super Duty. So it's got disc brakes, the Sterling 10 and a half. 
I'm running 538 gears in a Yukon zip locker, so it's a copy of the ARB air locker design. All the brake hookups, everything went perfect. Brake shop had no issues hooking everything up. Have a sweet differential cover, quarter inch, fully welded by Chassis Unlimited. Rear drive shaft we had made by Tom Woods. Had to match the flange on the Sterling, which ended up being a much stronger solution instead of straps or U-bolts. And they just went ahead and made a full 1350 U-joint drive shaft with the proper flange for the 2410R up here. We're gonna mount our traction bar to the cast on the Sterling. On this side, we haven't got to mount that yet, but that will be done soon. The bumpers we got from Rusty's. Powder coating is not the best, but the bumpers have worked great for their intended use. Super Winch 9500 on the front. The wheels we're using are 5.7 inch backspacing. American Racing. They were able to tuck the tires as far as we could back inset to the Jeep, which ended up not increasing our overall width by a whole lot. It's about two to three inches wider on each side. And the rear actually matches the front track width, which is awesome. Originally, the front was quite a bit wider than the rear. No steering issues. We used the stock Ford Super Duty drag link and tie rod for the time being, even though it hangs kind of low. It works great on the road. The steering is very tight. One issue with the high back space wheels is we had to grind the steering knuckle down a bit. But after some grinding, we were able to get the tie rod ends on. Everything works without any issues. The rear axle, we moved one inch backwards by using spring plates and the new spring perches. We got some six inch long spring perches and some adjustable spring plates. So we're able to move the axle back. Since the tire gets into the rear of this fender, we're gonna cut back here to give that tire room and cut back up into this flare. And we're also gonna cut the front of this flare to kind of give it some symmetry on the back fender flare cutting. Rear bumpers from Rusty's as well. The fit and finish was awesome. We liked the way it molded in with the black two-tone on the bottom of the Jeep. So that was nice. Inside. Haven't finished running all the air, but we have our air compressor mounted in the old spare tire slot, which was a perfect spot. We just made a metal bracket dad designed and welded up. Designed it perfect. Everything's right where we need it. And that'll run the rear air locker. And it'll be able to fill some tires if we're in an emergency situation. And that's pretty much the overview of where the XJ sits now after the Super Duty swap. We'll have some four-wheeling videos hopefully up in the next few months. We'll get some time to get out and go four-wheeling and see how she does. Hope y'all have a great day. And please leave any comments with any questions of stuff that I just totally forgot to cover. Y'all take care.